Okay, so now we're going to enter the troop environment for the very first time, but still building temporary tools for the final system. So I've just got to change ownership of the whole Linux from scratch directory uh, file structure. Changes the root root. Sorry, so we've got to be the root to do this. And now we create some more directories. Create some of the initial devices. bind the dev directory into the LFS dev directory and likewise with some virtual file systems that the kernel provides and then just one other needs to be made and now we can enter the true environment now just one modification I'm going to do to this which is to add in the make flags setting which we've been using and I'll just check that actually exists it does so create some more directories Again, normally I'd recommend installing or running in each of these commands uh, just to make sure there's no errors. There shouldn't be, um, but it's worth double checking. So, again, I'm just copying and pasting, not really concentrating what the text says, but uh, if, you, if you do want to learn about Linux from scratch, I uh, really do recommend reading what's in between the grey boxes rather than just blindly copying and pasting. So re reissue this login. We should still have the make flags which is there so that's fine that's okay so the first package in this final temporary tool stage is lib standard c so we need to go back into sources now this time sources is on the route because we're in the troop environment we can check this by listing the file. So for example we're using GCC 10 uh, so there's GCC 10 there so we know we're in the right sources That's finished. Now I can install. 
to get text. Now this bit's also changed. I used to install just or compile part of get text, but now they've built the whole package and just copy the programs that are needed. So that's complete. Now install Bison. That's done. And now we move on to Perl.
that's done. And now we can build Python. And just remember Python has got a capital P, so if you're trying to find the source tarball with a little p, you won't get it. Let's install that. Yeah, that's done. Now we do text info. Oh, right, okay. Why isn't it found Pearl? Let's try all the config. Right, I didn't install Pearl. Okay, so not concentrating, let's start with Perl again.
Okay, so let's now install that. And tidy up. And now we can do Python. Just to remember that Python, it, the package begins with a pack capital P. Let's install it and that'll be Python complete then. Now we do text info. And that's text info done. And now we install util Linux. That's all done. So that completes the temporary system now. Um, all I've got left is some commands to clean it up. And remove some documentation. It says a remaining steps are optional if you want to back up the tools directory um, I've always backed up the tools directory increasingly I'm thinking is it any point because I don't ever use the tools uh, file that I create but I'll do it just for now um, it says all the following commands or extractions executed by root take extra care about the commands you're going to run as mistakes can modify your host system where the environment environment variable LFS is set to use LFS by default it might not be set for root. So we need to come out of the truth. So 
so we'll do an exit and we need to unmount these file systems because we don't want them mounted and then we're going to strip these uh, directories here the files in the directories this will save a lot of a lot of space And let's just see how much disk space we've got. Yeah, we've used up two and a half gig. We've got six gig of space, which is plenty. I think the recommendation is that we have five gigabytes spare for the uh, final part. Um, and we've got six gig spare on the root, which is where it's going to put the temporary tools. Now, when I've run this command, the way they've specified it is that it uses the tar command to call the um, XZ program in a subshell but I found that only runs on one core so obviously if you've got multiple cores you're going to be hanging around a lot longer than if you uh, run the, the XZ command separately so you could either tar the files and then run XZ on the tar but you need extra space for that or you can um, pipe the output of the tar command into the xz command which is the way I'm going to do it so I'll do this bit first to cd to the lfs and then I'm going to just think about the commands I'm going to do so I want to do tar first of all create a file in fact I'll do I'll use the p for permissions v for verbose and f for the file name that is going to be the file name, but we're not going to send it to the file, we're going to send it directly to XZ. So we're going to tar everything in this directory, pipe it to XZ minus uh, Z for compress, V for verbose. Uh, yeah, let's leave this one off actually. Uh, e for extra compression if you've got the memory. Um, again, if you want to use a multi threading, you will need extra memory. That's the point. So, four for the number of threads. I think you can put zero in and it will use the maximum number of threads anyway. And then I want to pipe that or redirect that rather to this file here. And I think that should work, so let's try that. And just to double check that is using all cores, I'm going to get a new tab up, do top, and yeah, you can see it's hammering them all, so that's fine. So I'll just wait for that to finish. Uh, I can't remember how long it's been now, I think it's about 10 minutes or so, so I'll just uh, wait for that to finish and come back.
Okay, so that has compressed in five minutes. So we should have in the root directory a archive, yeah, with all the files that we've created so far. So if you left the true environment, which we have done, we need to create the virtual file systems and enter true again. So we need to mount the dev again and mount all these file systems. And then in theory, the oh, and also create this again. theory we have should already have this truth in the history which is there it's got the make flags in there so we can just select that check the environment we've got the make flag so it's accepted that that should all be all we need to carry on with the final part